This tiny box is a full function PC, but how does it work? Let's find out. Dave Taylor here, and I have friends who have gaming PCs, and they're enormous. They're really cool, and they have transparent sides, and they have flashing neon, and lots of big fans to keep those processors and GPUs cool, but they're enormous. Enter this. This tiny box is the Peladon Mini Desktop PC, and it is a fully functional Windows desktop computer in this small. You can literally just put it under your display and never have to worry about anything being under your desk. How nice is that? So the question then is, how does it work and how does it actually run? Is it going to be fast enough to use? Now, it comes with Windows 11 Home, but if you're not a big Windows 11 fan, you can certainly drop one of many distros of Linux on here too and run it in a totally different environment. You could probably dual boot it if you wanted to. But I'm going to be honest, this is not going to compete with a gaming PC, but this is also 1 20th of the price of one of those, if not even more inexpensive. So what I want to do is want to give you just some basic specs, show you what it comes with, and then we're going to spin things around. I'm going to plug in a display and a keyboard and a mouse, and we're going to boot it up and see how this thing runs. But first, let's start with the tour of the ports. On the back are two HDMI 2.0 plugs and two USB-A plugs, and they're USB 2.0. And then there's this Ethernet jack, and that's an RJ45 Ethernet, and that little tiny sticker on it actually says, please note, to set up more quickly, avoid using Wi-Fi or LAN initially. The connection may trigger prolonged updates causing delays in desktop access. Now that we know that, I'm going to pull that sticker off. So I'll just put it here on the table. And then on the top is another sticker that actually tells you here's how to get started with the system. And we'll reference that later as we need. So on the back are all those ports and there's DC power because it includes a little plug-in uh, power unit and that's going to supply the power so this thing runs. Obviously, your display or monitor is going to have to have its own power source, but you already know that. On the left and right side, there's really nothing other than some stylish cutouts to make sure there's some air circulation, because you do want to make sure these stay cool. And then on the back of the unit is, left to right, a tiny reset button, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, a USB-C, and then two more USB-As, but these are USB 3.2, so these are faster than the ones on the other side, and a power switch. So that's everything in this box. It is super light. As you can see, it is small enough. You can hold it in your hand. How cool is that? It also comes with a mount kit, including tiny little screws, so you can actually just basically put this on a wall maybe behind your monitor, or you can use this plugged into a TV, for example. And then there is actually an HDMI cable for plugging in your monitor. So we have power, HDMI, wall mount, and we have a simple little user manual. There's not really much to talk about. It's basically, here's what you plug in, and here's the button you push to get started. Speaking of which, let's get started. But before we get there, let me tell you just a little bit more about it. So, it is powered by an Intel Celeron Twin Lake processor. This is a quad-core 2.0 gigahertz processor with 3.6 gigahertz burst. It is a threaded, but not hyper-threaded CPU. It includes a 6 megabyte cache and it is a really low power usage device. This is using somewhere between six and 15 watts, depending on how much you're pushing it, which means you're gonna be paying maybe a buck or two a year for electricity for this. That is going to be a dramatic difference to those monster gaming PCs. 
Um, and then it also features an Intel UHD one gigahertz graphics coprocessor. Not expecting this to be doing a million rendering frames per second or anything, but for a lot of people, if you're browsing the web or you're watching a YouTube video, or you're checking your email, you know, you don't need an enormous processor for those things. Now, one of the fun things is between the HDMI and the USB-C, it can drive three displays at 4K at 60 Hertz. I'm only gonna be plugging in one, but it'll certainly be interesting to see how quickly that works and how much that stays up with what we're doing. So 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, 512 gig SSD hard drive, and that's a solid state drive. So that's pretty nice actually. Windows 11 Home should be pre-installed. We'll find out in about 60 seconds if that's true. Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth 4.2. So those are older versions of those protocols. But if you're going to use a Bluetooth keyboard, then Bluetooth 4.2 is going to be plenty good enough. And if you're on Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 5 is probably what you have. You might have Wi-Fi 6 if your router is less than two years old. But, you know, you'll probably get by. And again, you know, this is really going to be really good as like a file server or a media server or a low demand device. So I think this would work really great plugged into a TV as a better way to do a smart TV than some of those mediocre built-in smart TV operating systems. This one, you could do whatever the heck you wanted. You could literally just run Linux on it and then have a pretty high powered setup there. So enough talk, enough looking at all this. Let me switch things around and let's see how this thing works. All right, we're ready to roll. So I have a Lenovo display screen, an Apple keyboard, it's a wired keyboard, and I have a Cherry mouse, also wired, and that's all plugged into the back of the Peladon. We're ready to start. So I'm gonna push the button and it's lit up, that's a good sign. Let's make sure our monitor is awake. And that is looking very promising. So I'm hooked up via HDMI to one of the two HDMI ports in the back of the unit. And we're booting Windows 11. Excellent. Let's proceed. And it looks like we're starting with Windows 11. So let's proceed. United States. And is this the right keyboard layout? Sure, we'll just say it's US. We don't wanna add a second one. Notice the mouse is working just fine. So I'll skip here. Let's connect you to a network. So this is my Wi-Fi network. Let me go ahead and jump onto it. And the Peladon is a Wi-Fi 5 unit, but my network is actually Wi-Fi 6. But luckily things are backward compatible, so it looks like I'm connected. Excellent, let's keep moving forward. Next. Checking for updates. Oh, if I had a nickel for every time that I had to wait while an update was running, I would have a lot of nickels. Let me just jump forward. So it's all looking good, and at this point it's asking me to review the license agreement. This is the Windows license agreement. I suspect this is an OEM version of Windows 11 Home, but we'll find out. One more boot. This is pretty typical for first startup. And so the choice here is, how would you like to set up this device? Set up for personal use or set up for work or school? I think I'll set up for personal use. So do that, then I'll choose next again. And your Microsoft Essentials are waiting for you. Continue to sign in. Let's add your Microsoft account. So let me just jump beyond this. And I'm logged in. So this is my Microsoft account and you can see my last backup was just a couple of days ago on a laptop that I have given the ingenious name 6SU3HPQ1. <laughs> so let's see, do we want to restore from that one? Sure, let's continue with that. And you can see all of these folders, apps, settings, and credentials are all restoring. 
And again, this is going to take a couple of minutes, so I'll be right back. This looks very much like Windows 11, doesn't it? And it says, your update is in progress, we'll take it from here. While you wait, you can check out the latest Windows features. Or I could skip ahead, because that's the magic of recording this process. I'm not gonna lie, that took a while, but we should be able to use my pin and log into this Windows machine. Well, it's looking promising. This is a first login, so it's gonna give us a little bit of information about Windows 11, and it's doing further account setup. And this might take a few minutes, so you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna skip forward. Well, looks like we've made it to Windows, so that is pretty nice. Let's go ahead and launch Edge. And, all right. You're almost set up. And sure enough, it is fully set up and all of my favorites are along the top. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of full screen mode and resize it as I like, which looks more like that. And let's go and check out the National Weather Service. So that was pretty fast. And we can go to BBC News. So what you should be looking at here is how fast it's working and it's looking pretty good. So let's see, I can go to, go to youtube.com and here we go, free with ads. So I'm really curious what it's gonna look like to watch a movie on this. So let's try Transformers Age of Extinction. Who doesn't like Transformers movies? So we're coming into the movie and I'm gonna try to jump into a specific portion and we'll turn off closed captions and we'll turn on audio. And this is not a very exciting point in the film. Let's try here. And now that is extremely watchable. And so now I'm gonna go full screen and this is exactly what it would look like if you just had this hooked up to a big television. Now, I don't actually have the rights to show you the Transformers movie, so we'll stop there. But I think this is a pretty nice demo. This is really a pretty speedy little device for this sort of task. And you can see, you can certainly scrub through various portions of the film and it catches up quite quickly. Let's go back to not full screen. So that's a good demo. And it's welcome to Microsoft Edge. Let's go to msn.com and see how quickly that loads. That tends to be a very busy page. Welcome to the updated MSN. And the first thing we see is a big ad. That's pretty typical, but here's this. But of course you can also get to MSN off the taskbar. And I can open and close that. And again, it's pretty speedy. Now, one of the things I usually do when I get to a new computer is I go and double check that I am up to date with all the software. So this is another opportunity to see how fast things work. So this is Windows update. And whew, there are a lot of things to update here. So we'll just download and install everything and see how long that takes. While that's happening, I'm gonna to go to the store and I'm gonna check for updates to my apps too. But so far, so good. This is looking like it's plenty fast enough for a lot of people's uses. And is this going to give you maximum frame rate on an extremely demanding version of Call of Duty or something? No. Is this gonna run Steam like a champ? Probably not. But if you're just looking for something that will let you watch TV or movies or YouTube videos or surf the web or edit your documents or something, this is a viable choice. And again, look how small this darn thing is. So 
Looks like it has the updated version of all of my apps, which is great. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. Let's see how system's doing, the system settings. And completed, retry, downloading, completed, 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 completing, pending install, installing, pending install. So it's chugging along and I'm gonna guess that's probably about four or five more minutes and we'll have all the security updates all the Windows updates. There's a bunch of Intel software components and Intel system because of course, the Celeron Twin Lake CPU is an Intel chip. So let's just go ahead and stop here and let me make a few more comments about this device. There's really a lot to like with this little mini desktop PC. It is not the fastest device on the market. This is not gonna replace your gaming tower. But on the other hand, it is small enough that you can put it really anywhere. You can tuck it behind your television and use it as a smart device that way. And it's powerful enough that for average users using it for typical daily tasks, I think it's more than up for that. You saw we watched a movie full screen HD, had no issues whatsoever. And then we were jumping around on different websites and launching programs that just took a second or two. I'll tell you, I have PCs and PC laptops that are much slower than this little tiny computer. And again, note that it included Windows 11 Home. So this isn't something where I then had to go buy a license to be able to run Windows. So really, it's a very impressive device. If you're a hardcore power user and you really wish I would have run some performance tests and stuff, then this is probably not your computer. But if you wanna run a file and print server in your office or your home office, or you wanna have it as a media server running something like Plex, it can do pretty well with that. It's not gonna do great if it has to actually re-encode video, but generally speaking, I think that's not something that most people encounter. But importantly, it can do a lot as a very basic super budget PC. So we've talked about all the specs, I've given you all the demo, we need to talk about the price. Before we get there, I'm gonna ask you to subscribe to my channel, click or tap on that subscribe button, hit that bell icon for notifications of my new content, and please give me a thumbs up if you found this of value, really appreciate when you do that. Excellent. This is the Peladon Mini Desktop PC. This is N150. They have a bunch of different models because they have different CPUs and processors. And this is the Celeron Twin Lake Quad Core 2 gigahertz. And it is $199.99, currently discounted down to $159.99 at amazon.com. Now keep that in mind, that $159.99 gets you a full Windows PC computer with Windows 11 Home ready to roll. So honestly, you just wanted to get a license for Windows 11, and that might be two thirds of the price of this unit, and now you got a whole PC. So especially if you have a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse, and they might not even all be the same color, plug everything in, take some, you know, have some patience on that first setup because it's gonna take a while, but then you've got a really nice Windows PC at a remarkable price. That's what I got. I'm gonna go back to watching Transformers. I know it's not a great movie, but it is entertaining. So I'm gonna go back and watch that, which means I'll hope to catch you in my next video.